This is going to be a quick guide on how to install memory. I realize I might have sort of uh, poked fun at anyone who doesn't know how to install memory in one of my recent videos, and for that I feel terribly bad. But uh, yeah, this is going to just be a basic guide. So step one is going to be ground yourself out, touching a plugged in power supply, just like that. Step two, you can see I've already installed two of this triple channel kit, so two of the modules, but I'm going to go ahead and install the third module. Now, this ASUS board, this is the Rampage 3 Extreme, is a little bit different from most motherboards because on the one side, these are not proper clips, and on the other side, they are proper clips. So what you do is you just push this side in. Okay, you make sure it's in the right spot. Push this side in, okay, and then you push down the other side of the module until the clip goes in. Now, if you had clips on both sides, then you'd actually push it in evenly, and then the clips would go on both sides. It's fairly straightforward. Now, that was it for the physical installation, but this is the part that some people actually don't know about. If you install new memory in your system and boot it up, most motherboards are going to default to a safe setting rather than the actual capabilities of the RAM modules you installed. So this motherboard is, um, I just put in two, uh, for rather two, six gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz. Okay, and so 1600 megahertz is the speed and it also runs at C9 timings. Okay, overclocking failed, please enter setup, blah, blah, blah. Uh, press F1 to run setup, that's what I wanna do. So you can see right here, it is not running at 1600 megahertz. Right off the bat, we see that. So the first thing we're gonna change is the DRAM frequency. And yeah, I pressed the right button. So we're gonna set that to 1600 megahertz. Select okay to use the current DRAM voltage. Uh, something automatically, oh, okay. Select cancel to increase the DRAM voltage automatically if your DIMMs require higher voltage. Well, we're gonna do it, uh, we're not gonna do it automatically, we're gonna do it manually. And this is something that you may not be able to tell by looking at the modules or even by looking at the packaging. See on these, all we can see here is a part number. So with that, you can uh, throw the part number on the Kingston website and then find out exactly what all the settings are you need for your RAM. So there's the frequency which is 1600, we've already set that. Then there's the latencies, and usually for, even for an intermediate to advanced user, you're only gonna set four latencies. Um, and the most important one for performance is the CL or cast latency. So here, we've got that set. And then the last one is the voltage. We're gonna do the voltage next here. So this RAM is rated at 1.65 volts, just like most DDR3 kits for Core i5 and Core i7, because it's not recommended to use a higher voltage than that for these chips uh, due to the integrated memory controller. So I'm actually gonna go a touch lower. Most quality RAM is gonna run at its rated speed, uh, even with a little bit less voltage anyway. But that's one of the ways to be able to, okay, here. These are all the different ways to be able to tell a quality kit from a lower quality kit. Frequency, higher frequency is good. Latency, lower latency is good. And voltage, lower voltage is good. So the ideal memory kit would run at the fastest frequency with the lowest latency and the lowest voltage. Obviously, like anything in computers, it's always a bit of a trade-off, but this is a fairly mainstream kit. And uh, let me just see if there's anything that we can do to get a little bit further into this RAM configuration. This is a very, very performance-oriented board, so I'm sure I'm gonna find something here. Uh, might be under advanced CPU config. No, no. Sometimes you find the uh, RAM settings under CPU these days because it is running off the integrated controller on the CPU. Uh, it might just be a matter of setting. Oh, cool. XMP modules yeah, or XMP profiles. This is another thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is a way for your RAM to have a little setting on it that tells your motherboard what all of its default settings are. So here you see 1600 megahertz, 99927. That's the latency. Uh, 1N. So that's like kind of like the old 1T, 2T timing. Uh, one is better. And then you've got 1.65 volts to 1.4 volts. There you go. Look at that. So XMP is a pretty cool thing. EPP is the NVIDIA equivalent. And then the other one is CPU ROG, and then manual. So if we go to manual, then I'm guessing it will actually let me set something other than the DRAM frequency. Here, it's gonna give me that warning again. Memory configuration, ah, timing control, here we go. So here you can see it's already set to almost the right things, but I can actually set the latencies myself. So you can either go in and set the all the uh, frequency, latency, and voltage yourself, or you can, 27 was actually what it was rated for. 
And then let me just see if I can find the... Do, 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 do. Ah, yes, one end. Here we go. So now it is set manually to what it's supposed to be. Or if you want to make life easy for yourself, you can just go in and... Five. Oops, oh, I just almost set my CPU voltage to 1.65. Bad, bad, very bad. Uh, 1.65, there we go. Or you can just use an XMP profile to do it for you. So I'm just going to reboot and show you that now we have not only installed our RAM, but we have also configured it to work properly. My next guide will probably be more like uh, RAM overclocking and how to do that because it's it's actually quite simple. You just Turn the frequency up, turn the timings down, and turn the voltage up. It's basically like CPU overclocking. More frequency, more volts. And then profit. So here you go, everything's gonna be set the way it's supposed to be, and wasn't that fun. Thanks for checking out my video blog and my guide on installing and configuring your new memory modules. And a big thanks to Kingston for providing this RAM. Don't forget that if you are subscribed and you leave a comment under my unboxing of this Kingston 6GIG kit, then you can be qualified to win it.